Windows Partition Manager. Hi, welcome to your tutorial about partitions and partition management. You will learn about partitions and view a live demonstration of partitioning a hard drive for a dual bootable computer with multiple operating systems. This is very easy and I think you will like what you learn. Partitioning. The act or process of dividing something into parts. The first thing we will need to understand is the concept of partition management software. This is nothing more than a graphical user interface that is easy to understand. Simply go to your start button and type partition in the search bar. In Windows, you can choose the Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Windows Disk Management is already installed by default in your operating system. In computer lingo, partition can be about dividing your hard drive into separate drives. This is done by configuring your hard drive to believe there is two different drives on the same hard disk. Partitioning hard drives can give you separate file systems. You can do many things with separate file systems. You can install multiple operating systems. You can have access to multiple file formats for file sharing. Partitioning can enable easily accessible backup environments that don't depend on any single operating system installation. Let me show you what I mean. I'm preparing this computer for dual boot. I'm a dual boot fan. The dual boot allows me to choose between two or more operating systems when I power on my computer. I enjoy using both Windows and Linux on every device I can. I install it on my laptop, my desktop, and experiment with installing it on other devices. When I'm dealing with partitioning, it is absolutely essential that you understand the scope of your configuration. If you choose to resize a partition and there is an operating system installed on that partition, you must manage that partition from inside that operating system to prevent damaging files. Right here you see my 100 megabyte MBR file which you will find installed already on your computer. This is a small hard drive partition that enables the booting process. Right here, you'll notice your main Windows hard drive. This right here is where your operating system is installed. And to resize this partition, I must be booted from this operating system. Otherwise, files could be damaged. This is a 90 gigabyte area on my, part, on my hard drive that has not been partitioned. This is a separate free space. On your hard drive, you may find a small partition that says something like this, recovery on it. This particular image comes from an HP. This is the HP recovery drive. It averages about 12 gigabytes, give or take. It varies from computer to computer. Do not attempt to resize or reformat or alter this partition in any way. This is your backup Windows operating system recovery area. To resize my Windows partition, I must be using Microsoft Windows to do it. If I'm in, inside a Linux operating system partition, I must only resize it inside the installed version of Linux that that drive has installed on it. A partition that is open with no operating system installed on it can be resized from any operating system without damaging your file system. It is important to note that when sharing files between operating systems there can be complications that may damage or break some files. Handle with care and use proper, proper backup procedures. Your files are your photo album, your music shelf, your contacts, your bookshelf. They are valuable to you and you want them to stand the test of time. This is the purpose of partitions. Enable your own creativity in the future by using partitions with advanced partition management. Now that you know a little bit more about partitions, 
let me explain a little bit about formats. Formatting a hard disk is lingo for technical information needed to read and write to that drive. It's kind of like human speech. What language do you speak? Languages themselves are a format that people use to share information. English would be the format type of that language used. A popular format for a hard drive is known as FAT32. FAT32 file formats can be understood by many devices. MP3 players, cameras, even Windows, Linux, and Apple can naturally share files on this format with no extra configuration out of the box. The C drive on this hard disk is formatted in NTFS. This is Windows file system format. This hard drive partition currently has no file system designated to it. I am configuring the specifications I would like to have on my new drive. So this drive I will format a FAT32 drive so that I can store files separately. With a FAT32 drive I will have a place that I can store and access files from both Windows and Linux. We don't really want to use Windows Free Space. What we'd rather have is an unallocated section. To create an unallocated section, simply click on a hard drive partition or on uh, the Windows Free Space partition and choose Delete Volume. Deleting this volume will erase all the data on the disk. Sure thing. Now we have an unallocated, easy to work with section. When I go to choose the size of this partition, it's going to ask me what size I want in megabytes. To make this easy, just think of megabytes as gigabytes. 1000 megabytes is roughly 1 gigabyte. So if I select 10,000, I should have roughly a 10 gigabyte partition. For this file format, I get to choose FAT32 or NTFS. I'm going to leave this alone and I'm going to choose FAT32. Now, from an unallocated hard drive partition, here, I can easily create a new volume. I want this to be 10 gigabytes. So if 1,000 megabytes is roughly a gigabyte, I'm going to type in 10,000. Next, I can assign whatever drive letter I want. You won't need to configure any of these. Here is your file system format. In Windows, I don't get many choices. I'm going to choose FAT32. FAT32 is a user-friendly format that is supported by multiple operating systems. Next, finish, and bam! There is my 10 gigabyte hard drive that I can now access from Windows and from Linux. Once I install my Linux right here, I will be able to use dual boot and whenever I store information on this FAT32 drive I will then be able to reboot my computer pop into another operating system and access this 10 gigabyte file and whatever stored on it. Also I want you to notice that the moment I made the partition it shows up in my Explorer. 
and as you can see there's nothing on it right now but I could store files at any point with this partition I can contain backup records if one operating systems fail I still have access to any files backed up on my FAT32 drive if both operating systems fail I can access this partition from a live disk. Brilliant, right? Now you see the power of using separate hard drives and dual boot. On this hard disk, I will leave a blank space as unallocated. This is a blank area on the hard disk. When installing Linux, I recommend, as best practice, to install to an unallocated or blank space. Let the installation format the partition for you. Partition management can be a bit confusing at first. Solid state hard drives use different technology. They adapt to partitioning in differently in their own unique way. Old school disk drives have what is known as primary partitions, logical partitions, and extended partitions. Your primary partition should house windows in a dual boot computer system. Logical and extended partitions are separate from the primary partition. A logical partition goes inside an extended partition. I can have several logical partitions inside one extended partition. I do not recommend using more than one primary and more than one extended partition on one hard disk. Instead, install Windows on your primary partition and install Linux on one of your logical partitions. These logical partitions will be grouped together in one extended partition. Hard disk drives are older technology and were designed to function based on the standards of the time of adoption into the mass usage. Solid state drives do not have the same design characteristics that hard disks do. You may find partitioning solid state drives is less complicated. However, hard disk drives are significantly cheaper and significantly larger than current solid state drives. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and informative current events in the world of technology.